Hey everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report. And today, we're heading out to some local creeks on the hunt for the smallest salamander in North America. And just trying to find as many aquatic organisms as we can. So, let's see what happens. Okay, so the best way to find aquatic salamanders is obviously by the water. Um, but they won't usually be just like swimming around in the water like you might see a fish. Usually they're hanging out under stuff like this for protection. So basically, all we have to do, hopefully, to find the Cameron Shore salamander is cliff enough of these rocks and other debris kind of on the eddies of this creek. And I don't see anything hiding under here, but typically you'll find them in the leaf litter under these rocks. This one's actually kind of a, a little, has a little too much water under it. These are very, very small salamanders, and they're hiding out on the edges to avoid predation by larger salamanders or fish that would be like actually in the water columns. But basically all of today, what we're gonna be doing is just checking under rocks and seeing what surprises might await us. So we'll get back to you if we see something. One of the most common finds on this adventure or larval northern dusky salamanders. We found dozens of these adorable little amphibians hiding out in the leaf litter on the edges of the creek. And you can see here that this life stage still includes a combination of aquatic features such as external gills and a rudder-like tail, as well as terrestrial features like teeny little legs. Over the next few months, these gills will disappear and these salamanders will be considered adults. As cute as they are, duskies were not our target for the day, so we continued our hunt for our tiny quarry. Guys, we just found, actually, not we, Nathan just flipped a rock, and guess what? There's a two-line salamander <laughs> with an egg mass under it, what the heck? <laughs> we're going to go look at that right now. So basically, the eggs, this this white mass attached to the rock here, and lots of stream salamanders do this, it gives the eggs a secure place to exist, and theoretically, it makes it harder for predators to access them. Also, not only that, you have either the mom or the dad. We think this is the mom. Most likely the mom. Um, because of the head shape that has been under there guarding the eggs. We don't have footage of this yet. Maybe we'll find some later. But in this genus, there's actually two different um, kind of male morphology you can get. You can get guarding males, which basically they get all jowly, their head gets massive, and that's when they're guarding the nest um, from predators, which is pretty cool to see. I can show you a picture of that really quick. But we think this is a female because she's not exhibiting that trait, but we're not totally sure. Either way, it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm gonna try and get one quick shot of her, but we wanna put her back pretty quickly so that the eggs do not desiccate and that she can go back and be happy again. The Southern Two-Line Salamander is a relatively common plethodontid that can be found in a wide variety of habitats throughout the southeastern U.S. and can be easily identified by the two dark dorsal stripes that stand out against an often bright yellow body and are what gives this salamander its name. I think that these are some of the prettiest caudates out there and I can't believe that we were lucky enough to find a mother guarding her eggs like this. As she wiggled back under her rock, I was already satisfied with the day's salamandering adventures. But this stream still had one more surprise for us. So, I have some wonderful news to share. So, have you seen this little dwarf salamander discovered by Esme? <laughs> Watch more attention by Decker. And now to be filmed. Look at that little guy. He is actually adorable. Okay, now, guys, this right here is a fully grown adult Chamberlain dwarf salamander. As crazy as it sounds, I know this is like the size of the duskies we were seeing earlier, but this is basically just about as big as the species gets, hence the name dwarf salamander. Now there's actually, well, what do you know, they're sticky. Okay, so <laughs> there's actually two species of dwarf salamander in North Carolina, the Chamberlain dwarf salamander and then your regular old southeastern dwarf salamander. Now, mostly they're found in the eastern half of the state. They get kind of into the lower Piedmont a little bit, but the coastal plain is usually what we think of as being the range of both of these species. Chamberlain's dwarf salamanders are most commonly found kind of in the area we're looking right here. So seepages primarily, but also small stream systems. Now, obviously, as very, very small salamanders throughout their entire life cycle, um, their prey options are pretty limited, but they are feeding on kind of very small invertebrates here in the seepages and the... 
And they feed primarily on small aquatic invertebrates in the seepages in creeks where they live. Now I know when you're looking at it, it's not very impressive. I think the coloration of these is actually really pretty. It reminds me of two lines, but obviously without the lines. If you flipped over, you'd see the belly is mustard yellow. And then these actually have four toes, which is pretty weird for plethodonids. Um, and so those are kind of the identifying characteristics of the species. So you might wonder why an animal like this matters. You know, it's small, you probably don't see it unless you're actually looking for it. What purpose could it possibly serve in the ecosystem? Um, and that's actually an interesting question that's been investigated more recently over the past couple of years. And what most studies find is that small salamanders like this actually make up a huge quantity of the biomass in our aquatic ecosystems. So while this one animal right here might be just, you know, like a snack for a crayfish or something, if you have thousands of them in the same area, suddenly that's basically the entire middle layer of the ecosystem. So salamanders like this function almost like top predators on the micro level in our seepages and creeks here in North Carolina, feeding on all kinds of invertebrates and then also serving as prey for what you could consider a top tier consumer like, I guess, a crayfish or a fish, which is kind of weird to think about. But for these guys, that's their whole world. This is one of those animals you probably would not get to see normally. And I'm really glad we could bring it in front of a camera for you. But we'll go ahead and get it right back in the water. We know so little about Chamberlain's dwarf salamanders that we're not even sure if they're endangered or not. And sadly, that's the case for many amphibian species, both in North Carolina and worldwide. That's why I think it's so important that I feature animals like this in my videos. Otherwise, how will people ever know how cool they are and why they deserve protection? Well, as my tells us, she literally found the salamander, like, in this pile of trash and leaves. That's where he belongs, I guess, so that's where he'll go. There was a joy to work with this little species, and he'll probably disappear right back under this leaf litter. Bye, friend. Thank you. All right, everyone. That's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the salamanders of North Carolina. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and comment your favorite part of the video below. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the Wild Report YouTube for new educational wildlife content, coming on Thursday mornings as often as possible. For photos and video clips from my adventures, you can also check out my Twitter and Instagram pages at the Wild Report. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of the Wild Report, signing out.